In the old days, Pokémon were cuter than a Pikachu in pyjamas, sweeter than a Magikarp in a maple glaze. Oh damn, just made myself hungry. But Pokémon fans, or long-time viewers of this channel, will know that as years have passed, the makers of Pokémon have shown a tendency to give these once adorable critters super creepy backstories. These usually involve harvesting the souls of dead children, or being eaten alive. But guess what? The classic old-school Pokémon you used to love are no exception to this new and terrifying rule. Here are the Pokémon that started out cute and cuddly, but have since turned horrifying. Because I guess everything good turns to ashes eventually, is the moral of Pokémon? Who's that Pokemon? It's Rattata! Oh, red eyes like the devil. Odds are good that Rattata was one of the very first Pokemon that you ever encountered. Why? Because this tiny, purple-hued rat-like creature is a common sight in the grasslands and starting areas of many Pokemon games. Easy enough to battle, quite straightforward to catch, Rattata is the perfect beast to introduce new players to the exciting world of Pokémon. As such, the Pokédex entries for Rattata in Red and Blue, the original Pokémon games, were as straightforward and as pleasant as you would expect. We learned that Rattata bites anything when it attacks. Small and very quick, it is a common sight in many places. Now you might think that's all you or anyone ever needed to know about the mostly cute, mostly harmless Pokémon Rattata. But strap in because almost 20 years after it first came on the scene, the makers of Pokémon clearly reckoned it was important we also know Rattata dies horribly most of the time. As per Rattata's entry in 2017's Pokémon Ultra Sun. Its incisors grow continuously throughout its life. If its incisors get too long, this Pokémon becomes unable to eat, and it starves to death. Yes, if this sweet little rat's teeth get too lengthy, it will slowly waste away, unable to chew, or perhaps even to fit food into its mouth alongside its gigantic teeth. Seeing as those teeth grow continuously, this surely happens to most Rattata after a while, in a particularly cruel and ironic way of nature punishing them for living a heretofore long and healthy life. <laughs> You never see this in-game, of course, so we've paid a forensic team to build an accurate mock-up of what this would look like. Well, I hope we didn't pay them very much. Who's that Pokemon? It's Primeape! Oh man, looks furious. Why is he wearing cuffs? The Pokemon Primeape is like a monkey that's fallen into a cotton candy machine, and is really pissed about it. This yelping, tree-dwelling Pokémon has always been irate, right back to the very first time aspiring trainers set out to catch them all. Primeape is, and I quote, always furious and tenacious to boot. It will not abandon chasing its quarry until it is caught. Now, you probably never thought too hard about Primeape's rage, because hey, maybe you were busy with school, growing up, falling in love, etc. But apparently the Pokemon team have thought about little else in those intervening years, because here they come with a more up-to-date Pokedex entry that explains what happens when Primate really loses its temper. Oh, what's it gonna be? It punches its target to death? Oh god, it's, it's not gonna fling feces at them, is it? No, the truth is much more tragic. These days we know that Primate can get, and again I quote, so angry that it dies as a result. Its face looks peaceful in death, however. Poor thing. I kind of wish it was just flinging its feces. Not at me, obviously. Who's that Pokemon? It's Sneaky! Oh, don't trust it. Don't. Uh, it looks all slimy. He's looking into my soul. Not many people know this, but snails actually make pretty good pets. They're quiet, sort of cute, and easy to look after. It does take a while to walk them, though. So you can see why you'd be won over by the Pokemon Sligoo, which clearly resembles the humble snail, right down to the shell and the wiggling, probing protrusions atop its slimy head. In fact, when we first met Sligoo, we learned what those wiggling stalks were all about. Quote, its four horns are a high-performance radar system. It uses them to sense sounds and smells, rather than using ears or a nose. In other contemporary Pokedex entries, we further learn that Sligoo's eyes have devolved, the Pokémon having no use for eyes with such a sophisticated built-in radar, and also that it excretes a sticky goo that can dissolve anything, a trait used to drive away opponents. These descriptions really hit all three criteria for what we consider a great Pokedex entry. Interesting, slightly scientific sounding, and nobody's getting melted.
But alas, the same could not be said of today's Sligu, which is transformed instantaneously into a horrific nightmare beast by the following later addendum to its canon. It has trouble drawing a line between friends and food. It will calmly try to melt and eat even those it gets along well with. In related nightmare fuel, Sligu is almost a meter tall, so if it did decide to, quote, calmly melt you, good luck getting away before your legs are turned into liquid and you're slurped up, to use the language of 2016's Pokemon Moon. So, yeah, we're thinking maybe not such a great pet after all. I mean, cats might get fur everywhere, but no cat has ever tried to melt me. Although, thinking about it, they probably would if they could figure out how to. Who's that Pokemon? What have they done to it? Eevee is Pikachu's closest rival for most beloved Pokemon ever, a status cemented by Eevee being a partner Pokemon option in the recent Let's Go games. Eevee is cuter than an especially cute button, thanks to how it's modelled on the real-world Fennec Fox, with its big ears, big rough, bushy tail and bright sparkling eyes. <laughs> Get it together! <laughs> Sorry. But it is also a badass Pokemon thanks to a unique trait, as described in Pokemon Red and Blue like so. Its genetic code is irregular. It may mutate if it is exposed to radiation from element stones. This means that Eevee has the ability to evolve into one of eight different forms with the help of various stones found throughout the games. This is excellent news for anyone wanting a small army of endearing elemental fox fighters. But there is a slightly weirder side to this cute critter's adaptability. Look into Ultra Moon's Pokedex entry for Eevee, and you'll find that not only are its genes easily influenced by its surroundings, but even its face starts to look like that of its trainer. So instead of the adorable default fox face, you'd end up with a weird Eevee with a human face? Oh, what would that even look like? I mean... Oh, no, I regret even asking. Ah, no, stop it! No, no I don't want to look at it! Stop it! Pokemon, why do you ruin things? Who's that Pokemon? It's Ghastly! Oh, look at his little fangs! He's a bowling ball with teeth. Ghastly is a ghost Pokemon with prominent fangs, so it was never going to be the sweetest pocket monster in the pack. Many who remember Ghastly from the early games will recall meeting this spooky Pokemon in Lavender Town, a settlement overrun with ghosts from which you must oust the meddling Team Rocket in a bone-chilling escapade. Back then, Ghastly was described to players thus. Almost invisible, this gaseous Pokemon cloaks the target and puts it to sleep without notice. A chilling idea that you will nonetheless agree is entirely suitable for a game made for children. These days, the facts surrounding Ghastly are considerably more intense. We now know, for instance, the weirdly specific fact that poisonous gas comprises 95% of its body. It's said that the remaining 5% is made up of the souls of those who died from the gas. And if you're wondering how this happens, the rumour goes, it's said that the gas emanating from a graveyard was possessed by the grievances of the deceased and thus became a Pokemon. This raises many questions, but chief among them, how and why is gas being released from a graveyard? We don't know, but we do know there is no possible explanation that a child playing Pokemon should have to think about. Yeah, that's how you go from chilling to... No chill. No chill at all. Who's that Pokemon? It's Frostlass! What even is it? As Pokemon players, we understand the allure of collecting things, be it gym badges, new monsters, or the tears of Gary Oak with which to make a delicious milkshake. <laughs> But there's a Pokemon out there who takes collecting too far, and that Pokemon is Frostlass, an ice slash ghost type Pokemon that evolves from Snorunt, first spied way back in 2007's Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. Players of that game may remember learning that Frostlass freezes enemies with icy breath, and that what seems to be its body is actually hollow. A lot has changed since 2007, of course. The Pokemon games are now much more visually impressive, Soldier Boy is less of a thing, and now Frostlass is positively nightmare-inducing. Because, fun fact, this frosty lady of the mountains is obsessed with grizzly trophies. Quote, when it finds humans or Pokemon it likes, it freezes them and takes them to its chilly den where they become decorations. 
So yeah, get caught out in the snow and expect to wind up a human Funko Pop, frozen forever as part of Frostlass's grim collection. Yeah, obsessive collecting of living things is only cute when we do it, Frostlass. Now get in this Pokeball, I've nearly completed my Alolan Dex. Who's that Pokemon? It's Cubone! Oh, I'm getting tragic vibes. Yeah. With its skull headgear and bone mallet, every Cubone looks like it's ready for a Skeletor cosplay. However, reading Cubone's Pokedex entry in red and blue makes it clear this creature is always ready, because, as the Pokedex says, it never removes its skull helmet and no one has ever seen this Pokemon's real face. Okay, that's, uh, cosplay dedication. But when Pokemon Yellow came along, more was explained and our hearts were broken. As it turned out, Cubone wears the skull of its deceased mother. Its cries echo inside the skull and come out as a sad melody. The poor grieving creature, you might think, but not too fast, as we have no idea how it got its mother's skull, nor what it truly is. No one has seen its face, so it could be anything at all under there. It could be this! What's more, having one around isn't very safe, as shown by Ultra Sun's Pokedex entry. At night, it weaves loudly for its dead mother, but those cries only attract its natural enemy, Mandibuzz. Great, so it wears its mother for a face, uh, we don't know what its actual face looks like, and its cry attracts massive vulture Pokemon. Can you soundproof a Pokeball? So, sorry about all that, but yeah, there were some Pokemon that used to be really sweet and really cute, but no more, no more. Why can't we have nice things Pokemon create? Why? Why couldn't you leave Eevee alone? Why does it have a horror face now? What, <laughs> what was the thinking behind that? Anyway, uh, thank you for watching this. If you can think of any more Pokemon that used to be adorable and are now nightmare inducing, then why not ruin more memories by <laughs> popping them in the comments so that we can take a look. And if you enjoyed this and we have more videos, you should check out this one up here. It's from us. It's about uh, really annoying memory games in video games. And look, there's a Clefairy on the thumbnail. And uh, down here, so this one is from outside Xbox, and it is all about the ways that games try to disguise loading screens. Thank you for watching. Now to try and forget what we've seen and said. Bye.